And welcome to episode 54, <coughs> excuse me, of Unhindered by Coding. I'm Nick McPhee. We'll be here for two hours doing more software development in Rust, um, continuing to work on the evolution, evolutionary computation system um, that we've been working on for uh, several weeks now. Um, just uh, a few announcements. Um, I will be away for the next two weeks, um, and I hope, well, hello, is it too? I hope that in, while I'm away to catch up on, uh, a couple of things. So hopefully I will actually like find some time to figure out what to do about the OAuth problem, um, so that we can actually like return to that and wrap that up. I mean, I feel like it's so close other than like, it's ugly, but yeah, we can fix that. Um, but I feel like functionally it's like super close to done. And if I just get the OAuth thing, it would be like, boom, finished. Um, and I'm hoping to get a blog finally up and running. I've been taking lots of notes <coughs> about things that I've learned in these different streams. Um, and I'd like to turn some of that into text and maybe some short focused videos in my regular YouTube channel instead of the Unhindered by Coding channel, which I'm saving really for just the archives of these episodes. Um, so we're going to see if I can get some of that done um, while I'm hanging out with my family. So today will be the last uh, stream for two weeks, um, but I should be back uh, right at the end of November, the beginning of December. Um, I think I come back on the 30th of November, uh, depending on the weather and that sort of stuff. Um, so today we will be, uh, returning to the evolution, evolution, <laughs> evolutionary computation system in Rust. Um, and, uh, uh made, so actually Right at the end of the last session, um, I asked a question about some FNs. I had some type definitions that were just FNs and whether I should turn those into custom evolutionary computation traits. And Izitsu was like, oh yes, traits, 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 which I think Izitsu has been chanting that um, in the background for months. Um, and so just because I had a few minutes last night um, I actually did one of them. I converted one of them, uh, which we'll talk, look at. And it was like, oh yeah, that was good. Definitely. I think more of that. So we'll start by actually doing a little more of that. Um, and then depending on how long all that takes, um, and also trying to move, uh, the score error choice into the scoring instead of in the child making, which is where it is now. And that's been bugging me, and I think other people have commented on it in chat in previous episodes. Um, so I think we should try to get that to go. So I think we'll do a little housekeeping like that. And then depending on the time, we will also then uh, start talking about push TP. I don't know. We'll see. But let's get some of this scoring stuff and trait stuff sorted out first. Um, so the first thing, oops, over here. There we go. Um, if we go here, so this is the commit um, where I changed. So I I'd had this pub type child maker, which had been a dyne fn. So just I basically just used the existing fn trait to say that a child maker took a random number generator and a generation and returned an individual. So it made a new individual out of the individuals in an existing generation with a random number generator attached. And I'd also selector was just a dying fun. Um, uh, and so the question really been like, do I want these dying fun things or do I want custom traits? And I had felt like I probably wanted custom traits and the feedback uh, last time was, yes, custom trait, good. So I was like, okay, let's make custom trait. 
So I had actually gotten as far as actually making this trait. It had been initially just called child maker trait, so I didn't get a name conflict. And so it was a simple trait that has a make child function uh, that takes self. And at first I was like, I actually I'd left that out. And I think someone, I mean, someone who I think was Zizitsu, but I don't remember for 100% sure, had been like, oh no, you really want self there. I'm like, okay, fine. And I hadn't really thought I would ever do anything with that. And then it turned out I needed it. And it was like, oh yes, cool. Um, that's nifty. Um, so we pass in self and the random number generator in the generation. So this is essentially the same um, signature as we had before, but with self added because it's a trait and we return an individual. Um, and here we don't say the individual is send and sync. Oh, no, sorry. It was, the, it's not the individual that send and sync. The FN was send and sync. I, I keep getting the syntax on this confused. So the send and sync actually applies to this whole type, the function type here, not to the return type there. So this doesn't need to be, this function isn't send and sync anymore because it's not like a standalone function. It's a method in uh, an instance of a type. Um, and so the type needs to have properties. Turns out all I needed was sync. Not 100% sure why all I needed was sync, but all it turned out I needed was sync. Um, so I initially just didn't have anything here, um, as you can see uh, on the original version of the trait. And then as I sort of pushed the implementation through, at some point the system was like, that's gotta be sync. And I'm like, okay, fine, I'll make it sync. Um, so, that, so basically we're tur turning this FN into this little trait. And then it's just a matter of changing you know, uh, make child to child maker, which seemed to be a better name, um, uh, with the ha which had the make child method. Um, and um, now the, um, oh, you, I need the, the dying keyword here because it was in the type earlier. Uh, it's now not built into the trait. So we need to explicitly have the dying keyword floating around in here. No big deal. Um, changes, again, changes some names and adds the dying keyword, um, changes the names, uh, changes some closures a little bit, but nothing very interesting. And then over, so that was pretty straightforward. And then over in lib, um, where we where make child used to just be a closure because all it was was an fn now we actually have a child maker and so i had to make an instance of that well not an instance i had to make a type which implemented that trait and that's down below um and so i have to make a new instance of that thing um i was a little surprised I, when I first did this, I didn't have this type here explicitly. I just had child maker equals two two point exo mutate child maker, which is a terrible name, but new score, and that didn't work because it then thought child maker was a two point exo blah blah blah, and not a child maker, even though this implements this trait but I need this trait here. And so that was a slight surprise to me. I mean, I guess I sort of understand this could implement many, many traits. Um, so we wanna be explicit about which trait we care about in this context. But I also would have thought maybe it could have just said, you know, oh, you want a child maker here. Does this thing implement child maker? Yes, it does. Um, uh, did it not work if you use ampersand child maker here? Oh, that's an interesting question. Because, oh yeah, maybe, maybe that's the issue. Because, let's see, the generation, it is a reference to a child maker. Oh, and I actually didn't put a ref, oh no, this is a reference. But it, well, hmm. 
Yeah, I don't know. Let, we'll try that out. I'm curious um, to see what happens. But so I had to do that little bit. And then it's also worth noting that before this was the one place where we kind of said that we were using error versus score. So score, good is up. Big numbers are better than small numbers. Error, good is down. And here we could switch between whether we were using errors or scores by changing this. And we needed this turbo fish because this was the kind of one place where it knew which direction we were going. That now happens here um, in the type declaration of uh, the child maker. Um, and actually maybe we do then need this type because otherwise I don't think it'll know whether we want up or down. We'll have to try that, but I have a feeling maybe we need this type for that reason as well. Um, and maybe that's why it needed it is that otherwise it has, doesn't know which way's up. Um, but I did find this seemed more readable to me than this, uh, the turbo fish thing here. It seemed kind of arbitrary to be like, make child with error um, uh, here. The dependency seemed um, uh, maybe, oh, hmm. Well, yeah, we'll look at that in a sec. But this, I found the turbo fish thing was pretty not obvious to me. Whereas here, it kind of makes sense that it would be here, that we are using a child maker that takes bit strings as genomes and returns test results of type, test results of errors as the um, test type. Um, and so we can flip this error between score and error and life is good, and everything else is pretty straightforward. We had to make a new struct, new type for two point exo mutate child maker, which needed to have a score in um, as a element, uh, a field, um, and that's the thing that probably we want to have the error versus score thing probably goes in there um, uh, at some point here soon. And then we impl, oh, I just made a new, so I had a way to put the score in. Um, and then we impl child maker for that type. Um, that's a little long and unwieldy, but um, this would be a place where some where clauses or something would probably make sense because having this is pretty ugly here. Um, and then, yeah. We implement make child, um, and and this make child was actually basically floating free as a function before in lib.rs, and now it's inside this impl, um, and you could imagine now having um, a bunch of child makers off in some other file, and lib would just go and grab the child maker that it wants. Uh, as opposed to having a bunch of free-floating functions in somewhere, which, yeah, just seems kind of like less good. So that all worked really well. I was actually very happy with that. So let's actually answer some of Vizitsu's questions. And then we'll see about... Um, see about also changing this to a trait like this and pushing that through and seeing what impact that has on weighted selector and whether weighted selector should be its own trait or not. Um, but we'll start with the selector thing. But actually, we'll start start by answering Izitsu's questions. So Izitsu um, wondered if we put ampersand child maker here, if we could get rid of the uh, type declaration here. And the answer is no. Um, uh, oh, but get rid of this. So that's just a proper instance of the struct. 
I'm with you. Yeah, we had too many ampersands there. Um, and I think we're going to get an error down on line oh, up. So, yeah, so up here, it can't infer the type of R declared on the struct population. So it's not able to figure out what this is. Um, whereas before we were saying what it was um, right here, and now it doesn't know what it is. And so you're suggesting we can put it here so we could type generation here and that would be explicit about what we need. Um, uh, uh, uh. So we'd say generation bit string test results error ba boom and now we've moved it so it's cl clear in the generation what's going on and this is now happy haha -ha, good job yeah actually i like that um so we're saying at this level what we're using and again just to be um uh if we run with error it should give us all zeros go a little computer yep we get all zeros and if we change it to uh score here we should go up and get ones do, 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 do. Yes, nice. Well done. Oh, I like that. So I think that's definitely cleaner. Um, yeah, I like that. So then this comment really belongs down here now. And it may go away entirely if we move the... Um, move things into the score um, in a useful way. But for now, that'll, I think, be an improvement on the state of play. Um, okay, cool, cool. So I'm just... So I guess, so when, it, when this was a reference, it wasn't able to do the, to notice that this implemented the desired trait. But when this was a thing, an actual value, then it was able to do that check. So the checking kind of didn't go through the reference. Um, interesting. I'm not sure. I mean, I can see why that might be true, but I don't think I could explain it. Like if a student asked me, like, why is that true? I'd be like, yeah, I don't know. Because um, it said so. Oh, and I it might be worth mentioning here as well that uh, we are putting together our teaching schedule for the 23-24 school year when I will be back teaching and probably not doing this or not doing it nearly as often. Um, and um, uh, looks like I'm probably going to be teaching uh, an elective on um, introduction to memory safe systems programming or something like that, which is basically going to be an introduction to Rust and why Rust matters. Um, and that'll be cool. I'm looking forward to leveraging the stuff I've learned here in that class. So that'll be nifty. And I'll have to actually start thinking somewhat seriously about that uh, next semester. But I actually have to probably write a course description, just a little paragraph, um, here in the next couple of weeks. So that actually may be one of the things I work on on vacation. And it might, um, I might post a draft on um, Discord and see if people have suggestions about that. Um, 
So, cool. I think that's very nifty. And I think that does a useful thing. Um, so, I'm a happy camper about that. I'm going to actually make... I'm going to commit that quick. Because um, that's a simple thing that... Um, uh, I can say something about... Um, uh, construction of child, child maker in lib.rs. Boom, boom. And I clearly need to, hello. Oh, I think because I made the, uh, text bigger, um, uh, it made it all impossible to deal with. Um, uh, is it so Twitch recommended um, changing the way references were handled in the construction of the child maker, which allowed me to uh, make the types a uh, little clearer from my for me um, and move the specification of the of whether we're using error or score to the declaration of the generation which I think makes more sense cool boom nifty 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 now if we go back here so in the current universe selector is again a dine fun and it takes a population and return a reference to a population returns a reference to an individual. And that function needs to be sync and send. Um, and so then the goal would be to change that to use a, oh, so, um, yeah. So is it, so I think you've made a comment late in the last stream about using an arcdyne selector instead of a reference selector. And I think you'd also implied that, oh no, I think that's maybe for weighted selector. Um, uh, and so I think we haven't gotten there yet. So let's focus on the selector trait first. So I made, but haven't used, so this doesn't do anything yet, a selector trait, which we would just change the name back to selector here in a little bit. Um, once we get rid of this guy here, um, that has a single function that takes self, the reference to the population and returns the reference to the individual. And then we would implement a number of different instances of this trait, um, for the different selector mechanisms. Um, instead of having them current at the moment, they're all in population. Uh, I think down, uh, yeah. So random is a random instance of selector. Tournament is an instance of selector. Um, Lexicase is an instance of selector. And one thing that's interesting is that none of these appear to be instances of selector, right? There's nothing here unless you kind of look at the types and think, oh, this is in population. So this is a reference to a population and this is a reference to an individual. And I'm going to remember that a selector was a function that took a reference to a population or reference individual. Nothing here that says this is a selector. Whereas if we make an EC specific trait, the selector trait, we're going to have a thing here that implements selector and it's going to be very clearly notated then that this is a selector. That's why it exists. That's what it does. Um, 
Whereas right now, there's nothing in the code to say that. We can have comments that say that. There's nothing in the code that says any of that. So I think that is certainly an argument for switching this over. Um, so that's the goal here is to um, make a selector into a selector trait. Now, that means... Where does that propagate to? Well, it propagates actually to right here because generation has a set of weighted selectors, um, which are a vector of weighted selectors. And so this is where the selector thing kicks in. Um, and I think this is where I think, and is it to correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is where you were thinking, instead of having a, whoops, ah, sorry about that wiggle. Instead of having an ampersand selector here, having an arcdyne selector um, so that uh, it'll just reference count and we don't have to worry about the lifetimes. Um, I'm going to start with just the ampersand selector unless you want to make a strong argument for switching to an arc. Um, I feel like the lifetimes on the selectors uh, oh yeah, since we already have the the we already have a lifetime for this reference, uh, maybe it doesn't really matter. I would, but if I made child maker an arc and the selectors an arc, then it might be different. Um, uh, but I think actually the lifetimes here sort of makes sense. I mean, I think I've got kind of the right lifetimes. Um, uh, it does make the error handling a little weird sometimes. Um, the error messages sometimes are like very confusing. Um, ah, so that's an interesting possibility. So see whether having the, the lifetime references are faster or slower in a measurable way to having the arcs. Um, and there is a, over, well, I guess we're going to have dyne anyway, right? Arc isn't going to make the dyne go away. And the dyne has some cost associated with it because um, it has to do dyna dynamic dispatch. But the arc then also brings the reference counting overhead. Um, so, I don't know. But it would be interesting to, um, so let me make a note. Um, this would require changing all the um, lifetime references to be arcs. So both um, weighted selectors and child maker. And actually this to-do probably ought to be down here on top of this guy with a million other to-dos. Um, um, uh, it would be good to uh, benchmark both versions uh, to see what the costs are. So I think that's that might be an interesting thing to do just for the benchmarking alone. Um, so I think that's an interesting idea. Don't think we'll do it now, but I think that's an interesting idea. So let's try to get the just the existing reference thing to work and then we'll go from there. So the idea then is this would become selector trait and uh, this is not happy. Oh, it's got to be dying. Um, selector trait. And now we... 
chase down all the things that don't compile. Um, oh, so you would just remove this com weighted selector completely. Um, oh. So you don't... I guess my hope was that like this is awfully long and doesn't convey any useful information. Whereas this, at least it's sort of clearer what we've got a vector of. And then I was hoping that name would be useful. Um, but you don't seem to read it that way. Um, did, and I guess this sort of is a question. I don't know how much people do or don't use the type. Um, Weighted selector is a struct that stores embedded selectors and implements selector. Oh. Ah, so we actually make a struct out of that. I, we, sorry, we make a new... Uh, yes. Oh. Cool. So instead of just having this be... Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, I like that. And so then, really, this weighted selector down here really just becomes a selector. Um, and we can hand it a single selector or a composite selector if we so desire. And then that's a lot more flexible. And that's actually really nice because it's actually turned out over here that after playing with different selectors, well, at the moment there are two selectors, but uh, for a while I only had one selector here and I was still having to put it in a vector. Um, and if we did what you're suggesting, uh, we wouldn't need to do that anymore. We would just be able to say it's a selector and we can hand it a single thing or we could hand it a weighted selector that's a vector of things and it would be happy either way. Good plan. I like that a lot. So weighted selector goes away for now. Uh, well, or we change it to be a type that implements selector. I think actually we could leave that there for now. Actually, let's. I'm gonna. I'll comment that out for now, and that'll force some things to happen. And then this will just be the selector. Um. And this will be a selector. <laughs> Dine selector trait. Uh, G and R. Boom. Yeah. Um, and then we'll chase down the next uh, so th 13. What? Well, that is not right. Uh, Oh, that's another file. That's the problem. Okay. Um, so, generation line 41. Look at that. We've got stuff. So, we're going to get a generations. We've got a constructor. So, this is going to have to be a selector. That's going to be a reference to just a selector. of G on R and a child maker and then we don't that assertion is meaningless now and this is now just selector and oh this should be selector singular and Oh, and this is, oh, yeah, actually th having this be, I'm going to end up changing names a ton here. This is silly. 
let's just comment you out and make this selector. I think that's going to be a lot easier to chase since I've got to have to, yeah, um, exactly what you just said. Since I'm going to have to chase this thing all the way through anyway, I was somehow thinking I was going to like do it all as selector trait, then get rid of selector and change the name of selector trait to selector. But I think it, that, that this is just going to be simpler this way. Um, and so why are you grumpy? Oh, because dying keyword. Uh, so that takes care of that problem. 63. Okay, this is going to be selector. And a selector, it's just select. Uh, and uh, this wants just a population. Oh, an RNG. Oh, it doesn't even take an RNG. Really? Doesn't select need an RNG? How does how do I get away with that? Oh, that's interesting. So make child took a th RNG, but selector doesn't. But I think it should. I think you're right. I think selector is going to need an RNG here. Or this is not going to work well. Okay, so that's not going to change any of that. Um, and so now select takes an RNG and a population. And we're in generation. So this is, I don't know. I think this all goes away because I think this was related to there being uh, multiple selectors. So I think we just need self dot population here. Um, oh, that was the call. Oh, we were pulling the selector out. I get it. So in fact, we can just have this um, and get rid of that. So we get the selector, call select on the population, and that returns an individual. So that's cool. And, okay. Um, so this will need to be selector, uh, self.selector, and then map init is grumpy because oh actually this is grumpy up here aha dying selector cannot be shared between threads safely so it does need to implement sync so um in the same way that child member child maker needs to implement sync selector will need to implement sync this is another thing that uh, was nice about adding the traits the explicit traits is that then you could put these dependencies in the trait definition and it reduced the amount of plus sync, plus sync, plus sync business that then bled all over the code. Um, so putting them in the definition and saying the selector needs to implement sync here, uh, reduce the amount of plus sync noise uh, that happened elsewhere in the code. And that was kind of cool. I liked that. And in fact, I wonder if there are going to be places where we say selector has to be plus sync. Maybe not. Um, that we could get rid of. And then here, this is going to be selector again. This is going to be selector. And that. I think makes everything in generation compile. Uh, so then we got to come over to lib and 
line 13, this goes away, where it, um, uh, yeah, I'll just get rid of it for now. We can bring it, we'll bring it back uh, in a second when we implement it. And then line 36, we use it right here. So actually I'm gonna just comment all of this out for a second and we'll say let selector, we'll just do a single selector. Um, oh, we, get, we actually haven't implemented this anywhere yet, so we need to do that. So, um, let's just say lexicase. Uh, new, and now that won't exist anywhere, so we'll have to fix that in a second. Uh, and then this is just going to be a reference to Lexicase when we actually implement Lexicase. And then we should be like able to roll in theory. So I think I want. I think I'm going to make a new module, um, new file, selectors.rs, and lib will, so where I'm going to put that, right here, pub mod selectors, um, and and actually here we'll say use selectors colon colon lexicase to bring that in and it's going to be like i don't know that um and so we need to add that um so actually thinking about it really this selector stuff up here probably ought to be in selectors um, shouldn't it? So, so I'm going to grab all of this. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, and then we're going to have to import a bunch of stuff to make this all work. Boom. Yes, import that. And we're going to have to import population. Boom, boom, boom. We're gonna have to import individual. Come on, there we go. Boom. Okay, so we got those guys. Now we want struct lexicase, currently nothing, and then impl selector gr for lexicase, which means lexicase is going to need to be um, going to have to have those types. Oh, and that means the impl needs to have them here. Yeah. So then we'll have to implement select, take self, rng, mute, Red RNG population population GR and return an individual GR to do bang split. Okay, cool. So um, you said, does it? But I don't know what that's referenced to because I didn't catch it fast enough. Um, so does it? Um, hmm. I don't know. Oh, does lexicase need GNR? Um. Well, can I say? But if I leave this out, oh, that works.
I would have thought the fact that I'm referring to G and R here Oh yeah. I mean, because clearly I don't refer to G or R here at the moment. Oh, so you think there there are probably issues here, but we're so let's actually because I I moved a bunch of stuff. Let's clean that up. Um, uh, import because the other thing should compile at least I think. Um, I mean it won't work because to do is broken. Oh, struct is private. Sure, fine. Pub struct. Uh, and now you're grumpy. Oh, uh, right. I need, I want selector here. Um, oh, I don't have a new. Um, so let me, let me go ahead and add that quick. Uh, um, impl, uh, lexicase, fun, new, nothing, returns, lexicase, uh, lexicase, and one of the things is that's nice is I think by creating this struct here, at least for lexicase, for the other, no, actually, for I think there are several places where um, having structs means we can pre-compute some things to speed stuff up later on and simplify things, which we couldn't do when selectors were just FNs. So I think that's actually going to be kind of a cool side effect of this. Um, so let's see what's broken. Um, oh, I made this function. Private and I need it to public. And now everything compiles. So everything compiles, even though I have no um, G and R here. So that's, I mean, we are saying G and R, we're going to get selector G and R for Lex case. And since at the moment Lex case doesn't refer to G and R, we don't need to say anything about G and R in Lex case. That's interesting. So even though inside this impl, there's reference to G and R, that just references these guys here. And so we're good. Uh, that's kind of cool. I'm a little surprised, but I, I, I'll roll with it. Um, and I think the more um, rusty way to handle this would have been to have implemented default, derive default on this thing. But since I think we may want to pre-compute some stuff, I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave this here. Um, because I think we'll want to actually have this take an argument that d and do something interesting downstream. So I'm going to leave that alone. Okay, so then we want to go to population and get the lexicase code, all of which is about to just run away, wah, 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 which will cause a bunch of things to not compile anymore. Um, and then selection. Oh, actually, maybe not, because we probably don't refer to that anymore. Um, so all of that's going to go in here, except for everything's going to be all wrong. Um, so this, all of that disappears. And then all of this shifts over. Boom. Boom, that looks right. And then I think these lines go away. Now, is that actually going to work? No, because we're referring to the population as self-individuals. 
So every place I've got self individuals, I'm going to need uh, to replace that with population. Um, Oh, I, mm, oh, I've got an S there that I didn't want. Well, life's a challenge. And yeah. So, oh, and population. Oh, I needed population individuals, didn't I? Well, there's just two of them. So it's, oops, ah, come here. Wah, 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 wah. And yeah. Um Ah, so we do need parameter R, right? So this actually needs to be test results are because we can't implement lexicase unless we have test results um, as the uh, test type. Uh, and that then needs to be test results. Oops, capital R. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Yeah. And then we cannot shuffle. Um, no method named shuffle found. Oh, we have we got to import slice random. And that had been imported over in uh, population and probably can be removed. Probably not using it anymore. Um, well, it says it's being used, so maybe it still is. Um, and then... Okay, so we've got some uh, ORD stuff going on. We have SWAP. Okay, so we got to do the ORD stuff. So the problem is that... We've got type R, and R doesn't necessarily implement ORD, so we need R to implement ORD here. That makes sense. That if R is not ordinal, then we have an issue. Now, why are you? Oh, this has probably got to be test results. R. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and now swap is the only problem. Uh, and we import swap, which was is it's his cool suggestion from many moons ago uh, to do. So we're saving memory. And then. Uh, Ooh, a lifetime may not live long enough. Well, that's interesting. So we're turning a reference to an individual. Oh, we don't have any lifetimes here at all. Oh, hang on. We got an issue here, too. Uh, oh, that was supposed to be a borrow. I think it, I think that was before. I think I, when I did my um, uh, search for place, I think I blew that up. Um, but this is still a problem. So I don't, I'm going to have to specify some lifetime action here because we need uh, the lifetime of this individual to match the lifetime of the population. Now, can I do that here? And say that we take a lifetime, a population with lifetime A, 
and return an individual with lifetime A? No. Did not like that. And that's presumably because that doesn't... Yeah, my trait select needs the lifetimes. So actually putting the, the lifetime here in select wasn't going to work. It's going to have to be um, up here in the selector. So the selector is going to need... Oh, it could be here. Oh, it could be here, couldn't it? Um, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I had the right idea. I just needed to do it in both places to say that select depends on this lifetime and that the population's lifetime and the individual's lifetime have to map match. And then if I had left this alone, um, I would have been okay. Hey, hey, hey. nifty. That's very cool. Okay. Um, ooh, RNG's never being used. Really? Really? Oh, because we grab it here. Well, that's interesting. So I had... Yeah, so I had implemented... it before as a... Because it was a method in population... It grabbed it um, when the call happened. Oh, actually, is this... This may still be what we want to do because we want the random number generator. So select can be called in lots of different threads. And if we... No, but we'll pass it in in the thread where we're using it. Huh. I don't know. Is there is do we think there's a reason to prefer passing it in versus having it just grab it? Um I guess if we ha if we pass it in, we only have to grab it once. Um and that would be the advantage. So yeah, so this just becomes RNG here. Um, and now that gets used. And actually, make sure RNG. Oh, and shuffles being. I'm grabbing a new one too. Um, da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da. Okay, so we're, that, we're using the one that's passed in. And now, oh, everything compiles. Really? Uh, okay. Um, does that mean it works? Might. Um, we've got some uh, clippy warnings about unused stuff. Um, but let's actually see if it works first. So, yeah, so we go to all ones, and then if we change, um, let's see, where did we do the generation? Change this to error, we should get all zeros. We do, ha ha, nifty, that was cool. Um, so that I definitely think is a win. Let's clean up this clippy warnings and let's move the other selectors out of population and over to uh, the new selectors module and then we'll commit. Um, so population doesn't use memswap anymore. So all it uses is borrow from stud. Um, and we don't pull in test results anymore. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, that makes sense. Because that wouldn't, not all populations will use test results. So that actually is reasonable. Um, no generation. We don't use slice random anymore. Makes sense. Um, and it 
Clippy would like us to use default instead of this, but as I said, I think I'm gonna put something here. Uh, well, actually, maybe I should do that. Um, uh, oh, and it wants this to be must use. And it'll want, it'll want this to be must use. Um, uh, oh, and it wants self. Is that what it said? I'm asking about. Um, do, 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 do. So it's saying this could be a const function, which is true for now, may not be true indefinitely, but we can make it happy. Um, oh, and here it wants self. Um, and yeah, it doesn't like my if here. It would prefer match, but I kind of like the if, and so I'm gonna leave it alone. Um, Cause yeah, match a Boolean seems weird to me. Um, okay, so, so the question is, can I do something here that would in particular this to do, we ought to be able to clear this up. So what we really need is case indices. I don't think we need num results, do we? I think that's just embedded in case indices. And first results we don't need and first individual we don't need. So really all we need is to pre-compute case indices. And once we have that computed, then we won't have to have this code in Lexicase. It will be computed when we construct an instance of Lexicase. So that means that an instance of Lexicase needs to be constructed with, either we handed a reference to the whole population, in which case we can just grab all of this code and run with it, or, <coughs> we can ask how many sort of pre-compute, compute somewhere else how many uh, test results there are and then make the case indices. I think I'm gonna actually pass in the whole population reference because we should have, oh no, no, because we don't have one. Um, when we construct Lexicase over here, uh, blah, 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 blah. we don't have a population to pass in. Um, so we are going to have to pass in just a number. Um, and it's going to have to, we'll have to compute that. Well, okay, that'll be fine. So no, new will take num test cases u size and we're going to return self oh i guess we need to actually say that we're doing a thing here um so we're going to want case indices um indices is going to be a back of u size and it's going to need to be mutable I think we're going to find, oh, that doesn't have to take a semicolon. And so now case indices is going to be, oops, case indices colon, uh, zero dot, dot num, oh, num test cases dot collect. Boom. So that takes care of that then this will all get commented out for now and get removed in a hot second and this fails because oh self.case indices and that fails because oh it doesn't fail 
Oh, so we don't have to declare that mutable. That's interesting. I would have thought. But that would have so it's shuffle requires a mutable reference. Huh. I'm a little surprised that I don't have to actually declare. Th oh, here we go. Um, oh, and that. Oh, we may have a uh, problem of consumption because I don't I need to be able to have this survive multiple uses um, that actually this may break because um, this is going to consume that iterator no yes will it take ownership of those I don't know let's find out but we got a problem over here in that this now needs to have a number. Now, where are we going to get that number from? That's an interesting question. Because it depends on the problem. And at the moment, We, that's in args. Hmm. It's like the target problem needs to become a little more sophisticated than it is right now. So it can tell us things. In, for the moment, we can say let num test cases uh, equals match args.target problem target oops, count ones and that's going to need that'll just be args dot bit length uh, and target problem if is going to be two times args dot bit length minus one but that information really should be in the um, in the problem somehow. So I think we're going to need types instead of just um, floating functions uh, there. Uh, test cases. So that goes in there. Oops, I need a semicolon here. And okay. Now the world blew up. Okay, collect is a non-constant thing, so that can't be const anymore. That doesn't surprise me. And uh, here now we have an issue. Cannot borrow is mutable. Um, consider changing to be a mutable reference. Oh, so it's not that this becomes mutable. It's this that becomes mutable. Uh-huh. That actually, okay, that makes sense. Because you don't say that, th I don't even think you can. I think I can't put, like, mute here, right? I think it yells at me if I try to, yeah. Um, I can't put, like, a mute there. Yeah, so you can't say that fields are mutable. You say that um, uh, the type itself is mutable. So that's interesting. So now self for all the trait has to be mutable. Take a mutable reference. Because if any implementation needs it to be mutable, um, so, uh, because, so lexicase contains this case indices and this case indices gets shuffled and that shuffle happens in place. <coughs> um, but, well, actually, is this even going to, 
is this even going to work if if I have one instance of lexicase with one instance of case indices and I'm calling select in a whole bunch of threads at the same time are they gonna just beat each other senseless over trying to shuffle a single shared instance of case indices uh, in which case do I need to clone this or something here? Um, Cause it feels like, um, cause I was, so before there, there was, well, actually now that all the work is somewhere else, I was trying to like avoid this. So this used to be here and um, it just seemed kind of gross to have to repeat this over and over and over again, especially since we know like this is never going to change. So maybe that's all I should save because that could be, that does not need to be mutated. And then I make the new range vector every time um oh so okay i'm not sure i understand why that is so if we store a dynamic reference to selector and that's we can't call it if it's ant ampersand mute because we'd have to say that we were storing a mutable dynamic reference to a, a so it'd be a dynamic reference to a mutable selector, I think is maybe the right word. So I'd have to change some of their types. But I think you're right. I think this isn't the right thing to do. I think that we could get, I think it's reasonable to say, we'll store the number of test cases. Um, yeah, and that's my that's my concern is I can't access it across threads, and I think that's going to blow up the world. Uh, that'll be bad. Um, so actually, this should be this, and this should be this, and then this can just be that. Boom, and now this becomes just ampersand self again. These get commented. Well, actually, these get commented out as no longer being necessary. Uh, and then this becomes self dot num test cases. And this is just case indices. And this is just case indices. And so and so I think Rust would have saved me from myself by yelling about the Dyne selector thing. That when we we would have eventually gotten there and um, Rust would have said, oh, you can't do that, I think. Because that's, you know, in theory, the fearless concurrency idea, in theory, the, the, the error handling system, the type system should have yelled at me at some point and it wasn't yelling at me yet um uh so this actually now can be const again um and then where is it uh oh this can be self and yeah and actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually put a, um, I find the if else to be easier to read than <laughs> preferred use of match. Allow Clippy. Uh, comparison chain. Okay. Uh, 
so that makes that go away. So now everything compiles. So then the million dollar question is, is everything run? Um, so we've got the num test cases being passed in. So we have a single selector, which we pass in to the generation when we construct it. So in theory, uh, so error, we should go down to zeros. We do. And uh, right here, we change the score. We should go up to ones. And we do. Hot diggity. That is cool. <coughs> So I think that was definitely good. Um, uh, then we should pull the other. Actually, I'm going to commit this and then we'll pull the other uh, selectors out. Ooh, we touched a lot of things. So that's because we changed selectors and got rid of weighted selectors. Oh, we've done, yeah, a lot. I forgot about getting rid of weighted selectors. That had a lot of implications. Um, and population. So maybe really I just want to commit this. So we moved uh, selectors. So I think I'll just commit these two for now. Um, selector and lexicase to new module um, pulls lexicase out of population and into its own type. Uh, boom. And I'll deal with those other two guys in a second. Okay, so then we want to pull out. Um, so we have random as a selector and we have tournament as a selector. So we want both of these to go away. Beyond, beyond, beyond. And that's going to be a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so. So now we're going to need to have a pub, uh, no, struct, no, pub struct. Um, hey, Gotha, how you doing? Um, so um, I shared the picture of the burger, burger beer with uh, several people because um, the skeleton was very fun. And that looked like that was like a serious fruit beer. Um, is it super sweet or is it just very fruity? Oh, we had, I, I should, we had snow, um, uh, had an inch and a half, well, no, probably two or three inches of snow, um, night before last. So it's all white and shiny outside. Um, it's also slippery cause we had some rain. Um, so it's a sour ale. That's cool. I think I would like that. That's the sort of thing I often like. Um, so yeah, it's all pretty and slippery. Um, so slippery is not so great, but, um, uh, so I think we don't need anything there. And then impl, um, uh, so we're basically going to need this. Impl all that for random. So we're um, to catch you up. Um, we created this new selector trait before my selectors were just FNs, um, and so I made a, a EC specific trait. And there was a bunch of code in population that generated these selectors, uh, and now we're moving that into this new selectors module and implementing uh, them as traits that implement this. 
and that'll be pretty mechanical. And then we're going to have uh, the opportunity to move the idea of a weighted selector into here as an implementation of selector. That's actually, I think, going to be very cool. Um, so I'm excited about that. I think that's going to be a big improvement over what we had before. Um, so then I think we just need this. Boom, except for it will be select. And it will take self and rng mute thread rng and population a population gr and return no longer an option which i'm not sure why i ever had an option there to be honest with you um and then uh it's going to be population dot individuals dot choose. Oh, and you don't pub when you're implementing a trait. Uh, and we're not happy. Why are we not happy? Why are... Uh, I must have got my types wrong. Oh, select, I need an angle at lifetime there. Now, why? Uh, so a function pointer. Random and mute thread. Oh, populate. So it somehow thinks the lifetime's not there. Oh, test results. That, oh, oh, I don't need test results here. Yeah, bingo. That's the problem. That's the danger of copy paste. I don't need test results. Uh, because random selection doesn't require that the test result type has any particular properties because we're just going to choose somebody randomly. Um, oh, and choose returns an option. That's right. Um, but that only is going to fail if the slice is empty. So we should be able to assert bang uh, population dot size greater than zero um, population should not be empty and then we can just unwrap the choose or really maybe i just want an expect and not the assert <coughs> Because they kind of amount to the same thing, don't they? Um, oop, undo. I selected too much. Yeah. And then I'm going to have a clippy warning about... Um, what? Oh, I've got a semicolon I don't want. Um, oh, and I should just use my own RNG here. And prop Clippy's going to grump because we used to expect. So I want to allow that. Uh, expect used and I probably want to comment
And is empty would have been the better answer. Yes. Um, that all kind of went away. Um, but yeah, is empty would have been the, the right answer. So good catch. Um, and I, am I correct in thinking that we might as well just use an expect rather than having an assert followed by a, an unwrap that that really is what expect is for a sort of, uh, an unwrap with a message if the assertion fails, I guess. Um, and then, then we have to do tournament. So this goes away now because we've taken all that out. And so now pub struct tournament. And now this will actually have um, yeah, I guess it would fail before it tries to do the thing. And you are asserting something that would not be true as opposed to letting something happen that would fail. So maybe that is better. Um... Assert bang population dot individuals dot is empty and we need to say bang bang in front of that. Or there was the dot not, which I actually kinda liked, because having those that bang at the front I think is awkward reading. Um oops, nope, comma. And then let's grab this, move it back up here, boom. And then we'll just say unwrap. Um, yeah, I mean, I could, but I don't know. I thought, I think at some point I had selection returning an option. And then I can't, I can't think of a circumstance where select would ever fail or should ever fail, where it would make sense for select to not return an actual value. Um, I mean, let's put, I'll put a note here. Is there a circumstance where selection should fail? If so, do we want to have it return option individual or even result? individual error not sure ah um but at the moment at least i don't think it's an issue now i think i need to import something to make this work boom i think that'll take care of that um Ooh, that actually, that's a good, that's a good example. Is if you did have a selector with a threshold. Ooh, and that could happen. Um, uh, is it Twitch suggested, for example, um, having a selector with a threshold and then a composite that keeps trying selectors until it finds one that works. That's actually a really good idea. 
that could be that could be the argument to be made um okay i like that so i think i'm gonna leave that as a to-do for now but that might be a thing that i want to come back to so cool yeah yeah awesome so then tournament is going to have a tournament size uh which is i've got as a u size so far um and i guess really since it's inside tournament it could just be t size and then we're gonna need to have impulse tournament uh Um, yeah, we do need a pub. Wah, wah, wah. Pub FN new uh, size, you size returns to self. And we have self size. Boom, 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 boom. And I think that'll be potentially constantable. Um, oh, we haven't gotten around to using it yet. Okay. So that takes care of this part. And then we impl select. Simple G R S board. We are going to need that selector G R for tournament. Boom F N select A self. RNG and mute thread RNG population a population G R so we don't need for tournament we don't need to uh, to know that the test results are um, vector e so we can just say r we don't need the test results r um, and we'll return that and to do bang now in theory that all compiles and we should be able to go back to lib here and let selector be uh, tournament two. Oh, colon, colon, new two. Boom. And we'll have to import. And it doesn't like that. Type. Why? Oh, I said colon. I wanted equal sign. And bingo. Everything compiles. It's a whole lot of cl clippy warnings, but everything compiles. Now we just need to put this in. Um, and I think we can just copy this code. Hopefully, most of that will just work. Uh, I think our individuals, yeah. So, so this is now population dot individuals instead of self, and instead of tournament size, it's just size and size and size. Uh, 
Oh, it's self dot size. Oh, poop. Uh, if I'd been on top of that, I could have pasted that in everywhere, but uh, I was not. Okay. Hey, almost all there. We need max. Um... Oh. Oh, weird. We're comparing. No. Oh, we just need to implement ORD. But our implements ORD. Well. Um. So G needs to be equal. Oh, because we're... So G needs to implement equality. So we need... Why do we need EQ there? I, mean, I think we need it because individual says it needs it. Um, let's go look at individual. Um, yeah, so why does individual need EQ? Because you know, we're just comparing test results to other test results. I don't know why EQ would be needed there. Um, was that like a dangly bit to when I was flailing on something? Well, no, maybe not. Um, it wants GEQ. Oh, but that's Probably because, oh, we're deriving EQ on individual because we want to be able to say if two, yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to be able to say if two individuals are the same. And so it really makes sense. And in general, we really do want g's to be eq now would it can i can i just say eq here and then i don't have to say it everywhere else no because now i have to say it here And it's grumpy. Uh, oh, it's probably I needed to have done it over on the left, didn't I? That's probably needed to have been there. So we're saying that if G is equalitable, then we can have an individual. And then this probably needs to say equality. And this needs to say equality. Yeah, that's weird though, because this equality is not really necessary here anywhere, but we've now said it explicitly. Um, oh, and this one could have been partial EQ. Actually, could it? Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, three-pound EQ is not satisfied. I think it's. I think it does need to be EQ. Because if I say it explicitly here that it has to implement EQ, then it's going to be have to be EQ elsewhere. Um, and now here. So then I'd end up with 
EQ everywhere all over the place. This dad, this does not seem to be a good thing. Um, I don't think I want to like have to say EQ like every place in the world. Um, I was kind of hoping to avoid saying it a lot. Um, and that's how we started out is without the EQ here. Um, I was just hoping that maybe if I set it somewhere here, I wouldn't have to say it, um, in the selector, but I guess we're just going to have to say it in the selector. Um, so let's see, where were we? We, where's the problem? The problem was in, we're in tournament, right? Uh, what was the issue? Oh, I've already fixed it by putting, by requiring G to be EQ here. Um, but everything doesn't compile. Uh, line 62. Oh, did I, do I need the, oh, I do need G here. I guess I did need them, but I didn't, I must have had them before. And now I think I can get away with the partial EQ there. Yes, now everything compiles. Okay, so everything compiles. So in theory, um, oh, and I have an unwrap here, which it's gonna be grumpily about. So we probably ought to be, um, so this assertion protects us from this unwrap call. So I ought to be able to say, oh, I've got an allow. Look at that. I was already ahead of myself. So in theory, I think this runs. So we've got tournament selection. Uh, I don't think it'll run as well. We probably won't get all ones. We'll probably just get a lot of ones. Oh, we actually got almost all ones there's a zero here it never got cleaned up um, and man it was fast and that got to be all ones and then uh we ought to be able to change this to error and it all got, ought to go to all zeros um yep nice that's nifty and that's really fast. Um, so that all looks good. Let's clean up some clippy warnings um, in population. We refer to slice random and we don't need it anymore. And in selectors, I'm not using self when I should be. Oh no, I'm just importing self unnecessarily not sure how that happened probably not a complete thing um 42 so i'm not using that ah right so that's good good catch so this will just be i want to pass in the rng that we got um and 26. Oh, it's unwrap used because I changed that. One um, and then line 36. This should be a must use. So why? So it wants me to do. 
a it wants me to do a panics section in the comments here but this also panics and it doesn't say that there oh this is not even supposed to be there anymore that's the problem. This is supposed to go away. Okay. That was old code copied over from population. It shouldn't have been there. And now everything's awesome. Oh, oh. Well, is it really private because it's being implemented for the, the trait? So it's actually visible to the world. Yeah. So it was visible. So I'm a little confused as to why Clippy's like, that should have a panics thing. But maybe because it's a trait method... I don't know. I'm not sure why Clippy's like ignoring that, but I'm happy to ignore it, frankly. Um, wow, it's 11.47 already. Um, so the other big thing then, I guess, actually, I should probably commit. Um, so let's see, we moved random and... Um, oh, actually, isn't there another one? Uh, population. Is there like a best? Uh, yes, best individual. So that actually is also a selector. Arguably. Um, so I'm going to put that after random, but before tournament. Pubstruct best uh, impl and this doesn't really want a space there gr needs to be ord select or gr for best and it'll have one I must use fn select self rng actually we're never going to use the random number generator so i think we could just put underscore mute thread rng population a population gr returns an individual GR. Um, and I guess we probably have the same assertion that the population shouldn't be empty. Um, and actually, we want that same clippy allow. And then we just want a uh, population dot max oh individuals dot max iter dot max by key um I, I dot test results, boom. Oh yeah, right, I can just do max because they implement ORD. And then I know, yeah, 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 right, 100%. And 
and then they should just do the right thing. And I don't want a semicolon. Boom. And it doesn't like it. What's it grumpy about? Oh, because that's probably an option. Yes. So we want to unwrap. And then why are we grumpy? Uh, oh, because uh, G not GEQ is not implemented. Now, is there any? Um, oh, and then there's that made in generation. Oh, interesting. Generation assumed a population knew how to get the best individual. Where was that? Right here. Huh. So I wonder if we do want that method in population as well. <laughs> Not everywhere, but uh, there are places where I do think, oh, actually, this would be one of them. I do think, I find that bang, paren, bang really annoying. Um, and I find not to make more sense there. Um, uh, and actually, I've, given that this now exists in at least two places, I probably ought to have a is not empty in my population thing. But um, so I think, I wonder if I should have a best individual should keep best individual in population. Because um, otherwise we'd have to construct a selector here and then use it. And that seems kind of annoying. So maybe there should just be, I should keep that best population, best individual here. If I do over here, is that going to do the right thing? Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I think I can have it in both places. Um, and then maybe in selectors, maybe I just call population.bestindividual here. Best individual. And then I don't need that clippy thing. Um, Yeah, that's a good question. Is there enough time for a weighted selector? I've got a little extra time, so I think I could do it. Um, so then it's really kind of whether you've got time. If you do, I'm up for seeing if we can make weighted selectors be a thing. Um, and that would make me happy. Um, lib. Oh, yeah, I know what's going on there. So let's try it. Um, yeah. Um, so for those who need to leave, I totally understand, but I think we might run a little long today to see if we can get weighted selectors in here. So we're going to want um, struct weighted selectors, and that's going to have a vector of pairs of selector and u size. I think that's what, so come back over here. Uh, oh, did I just delete that? I thought I kept it, but maybe I didn't. Oh, well, so, but I think that was the intent. Um, now, selector needs a dine, and it's actually probably a vector of references to selectors, which means we're going to need a lifetime 
Yeah. And this needs that. Oh no, this is struct, so that goes this way. There we go. Um, missing generics. Oh, we need G and R. So we're going to need G and R. So, and that, that's actually kind of good because it says that all the selectors have to act on the same genome type and the same test result type, which is probably a good thing in this case. So having them all share those types is probably a win. Oh, stop. Go away. Go away. And now, struct, no, not struct, impl. Hey, gr selector a gr for weighted selector a gr boom bop bit boodly boo. So we're saying that we're going to implement. Selector for weighted selector. Ooh, a builder pattern. I have never used the builder pattern. And so your idea is that we would like start with no selectors and then have an add selector kind of method that we could use to add selectors in. Uh, is that what you're thinking? Um... So selector doesn't take a lifetime? Really? Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, because it's in select. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Okay. So then... Do these... Yeah, because we need a lifetime here. Because if I don't have a lifetime here, it's going to be all like shouty, right? Um, yeah. So, so that means, so, uh, let's see if we, let me just put the, um, the stub in. Oh, yeah, stop it. And then, so for the, what the? Oh, that's interesting. So I don't need this here. Go away. Oh, but it's not going to like that, is it? Hmm. Oh, so it's going to need to be... So if this stays A, like this would be B kind of thing. Or we would do the inner one as a different one. Uh-huh. Because this needs to match these two. And this needs to match that guy there. Yeah. Um, so we would actually do probably you start with the A on the outside and then do B on the inside, right? Um, like that. That probably reads better. Okay. And then the builder pattern is going to be in a separate impl on weighted. I guess we'll need a g r uh, weighted selectors. A G R, and so we're going to need like uh, we're going to need a new or a default. Would it be more normal to say default here? So just derive default. And then that, then your thing, we would have a 
FN with selector uh, that takes a selector uh, a reference to a selector and I'll have to get the types right here in a second and a weight which is a u size and we'll let that be nothing for the moment and then this is going to need to be um right because this is yeah a is the lifetime of the selector so that needs to match and then we're just not using it right oh missing generics uh g and r cool okay now we're just not using it and so then this is going to say um oh it needs to take ampersand mute self you're gonna mutate it self dot selectors dot push selector and wait uh yeah oh we want to return i get it yeah 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 because we want to chain so this wants to return a mute self uh but we're not happy uh oh we don't we don't no we don't return something i got yeah the mute cell allows us to chain because we'll pass in the w weighted selector um and but we do want to return self okay yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, except it doesn't like that oh that's because we then need to return self here and we don't like that Because that you got a mutable reference. So do do I have to like do so this? Ah. So we're not taking a reference to self, we're taking the thing. We're taking ownership of the thing, which makes sense because we're gonna add something to it and return it. And that'll be the the new thing. The old thing doesn't mean anything anymore. Okay. And that then lets us build this up. Um, and so back over in lib, we would construct one of these by saying, let selector uh, be weighted selector selector default dot and they're not getting anything I feel like I've seen this but you think maybe new would be the better choice? Um, weighted selectors. And use crate. Selectors, weighted, selectors. Left clean all the. 
Oh, it's private. That was my mistake. Pubstruct. Not put struct, pubstruct. Okay. Now I ought to be able to do things here. Dot. Uh, hmm. And we called it add. No, with selector. With selector. Uh, let's try yeah, lexicon case new num test cases and uh, args dot population size minus one dot with selector um, yeah we'll throw in tournament because it's there new to uh, with weight one so we won't use it very often and does this all compile with selector does not oh because it's private that's why it wasn't auto completing pub fun Oh, because I need references to things. And we're not happy about that. Test results default. Oh, interesting. So maybe I do want new because I don't know that I want to implement default for test results. I don't think that makes sense. Um, uh, so let's see what question is that arg population size for the new not in the weight it's supposed to be in the weight. So this is saying use lexicase almost all the time. So a high weight. And this is saying use uh, tournament selection like very rarely. Um, uh, so would it just make more sense to say new here? And then I skip the whole... Um, Derive default business. Um, pub blue. Pub fun new. Return self. Uh, self selectors. Uh, curly brace selectors. Back new done. Why are we yelling? Oh, oh, it doesn't need this colon. Got too many colons. And now that's okay, but this. It's grumpy. Temporary value drop. Oh yeah, sure. So I probably really wanted these two guys and then I could have just passed references to them. Boom. Reference. And, oh, and I guess I want to change the names. Lexicase and tournament binary tournament just to make that. And so then this is going to be in Lexicase. This is going to be oops binary tournament. Da 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 do 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 do. 
Look at that. That all compiles. Got a bunch of warnings, but we can figure that out. Um, oh, we don't actually, we're not done yet because we haven't implemented uh, select. We've done everything else, but we haven't actually done the implementation. So, um, so we had somewhere that was in generation. I wonder if I got rid of it. Um, we were doing dot choose on things. Yeah, I think that got made to go away. I think that was in here and we just changed it to be the selector. So, um, so here we're going to choose So a selector is going to be selectors dot choose. Mm, I don't like that. Um, we do have slice random implemented. Uh, where is okay? Rust choose. Uh, slice random choose so that really ought to just work oh need the self oh yeah right always forget that now choose RNG bingo. So that's a select oh, let selector. Uh, now that's an option. Oh, okay. So we should always be able to unwrap that. So so I think we have a cert bang. Uh, self dot selectors dot is empty dot not uh, the quote the collection of selectors should be non empty empty um, Oh, you're right. That isn't weighted. What did I do before? Um, I found a thing. Oh, choose weighted. That's what I wanted. Um, so you have choices that are pairs and you can call choose weighted. And oh, but it takes a function that is used to generate the weight. So in our case, we would just take dot one to get the other piece. Aha. Uh -huh. So we want choose weighted right here. And then this is going to need to be uh, S and W. And we want to choose based on W. And this has gotten really long. So let's. Uh, break this up a little bit. There we go. So good catch. Thank you. Um, I would have been just choosing at random as opposed to using the weights. Um, which would have been a tricky thing to catch uh, without some tests. Um, and so that means we need to allow Clippy unwrap used. Boom. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. And that gives us the selector. 
Yeah, but that's yeah, that's true. Um, I think you could have done something where. Hmm, yeah, I don't know. That's. Yeah, tests are hard when you have randomness, and this is this has been a, a, a pain for me all for many moons. Um, anytime I work in evolution computation stuff, I want to write tests, but man, writing good, non-terribly stochastic tests for a system that's inherently very stochastic. Oh, nightmarish. Um, so let's see. It's unhappy about this. Lifetime. Oh, it's a lifetime problem. Uh, Blarg? Um... Oh, because I've got too many ampersands. Oh, sorry, not there. You probably meant here. Yeah. Okay. Whew. That's better. Yeah. So we wanted the U size for the comparison, not the reference to the U size. So now we've got a selector. And so now we can say select tor dot uh, select uh, oh no we have a pair so I really want um, so this is really selector uh, weight which I don't care about and now I should be able to say dot select. Yeah, there we go. Pass in the RNG and pass in the population and we win and we're done, I think. Select. And so now this lib, we've put together some things and we could even Throw in let best be um, best colon colon. What do I have? Did I do fault or new on best? I don't remember. It's up at the top, right? Random best. Oh, I don't have anything. Oh, because it doesn't really need anything. Um, for, so it would just be best open close. Yeah. And then we could add another selector here dot with selector best and a weight of like one for fun. Oh, and I guess it'd be a reference to best. Boop, boop, boop. So now we got this fancy weighted selector thing. And okay, we've got a couple of warnings. Selectors 152. Uh, we choose weighted. Oh, we never actually use S. So that can be an underscore. That makes sense. Uh, and 131. Uh, so weighted selectors, because we're in the module selectors, uh, it thinks this should just be weighted. Oh, I'll buy that. Rename weighted. Boom. And and it wants a default instead of this new. But when I impled default, it didn't seem to do the right thing. Okay, I'm not going to chase that right now. Um, oh, I guess, no, what it's really saying is because we have a new that doesn't do anything, we can have default do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you suggested that earlier. Um, pub fund default self 
Um, self new. Yeah. Okay. And then we could impl default, I guess, here. Uh, oh, oh, that would be in the default trait, right? I get it. Oh, what? Stop it. Go away. So this actually wouldn't go in here, but would go impl a g r default for weighted a g r boom boom and then pop that puppy in there. And, oh, pub can't be there because we're impl implementing a trait now. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, and then it wants a must use on this. And it probably is going to want one. Nope, doesn't. Yes. No, 141. Oh, this one it wants a must use. Okay, zippity doo da, and now we build some stuff up. So in theory, we ought to be able to do runs. Boom. Down to zeros, and if we change this to uh, where generation go right here. Change this to score. We should go up to ones. Boom. Awesome. Much nicer weighted vector, weighted selector. Um, that is very, very nice. And nice use of the builder pattern. I like that. Um, yeah, I think that's really good. So I'm actually going to get rid of this comment as being no longer relevant. Um, uh, is there other commented out code that I need to clean up? Selectors, I think, is pretty clean. Uh, These two guys can go away. Uh, individual, I think in the end we didn't change anything here. I think that was me flailing around. Generation, I think we're in good shape here, except for lots of to-dos. And population, we mostly just removed stuff from it. So it got a lot shorter. Cool. I think that's awesome. So you people are amazing. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think that was actually super cool. Um, I think that was a very nice uh, update. I think we want to still um, get the... I think the score stuff is still in the wrong place um, in some ways. I think score, as has been suggested, currently returns this VEC I64. I think it needs to do return the actual test result thing. Um, and then the decision about whether we're up, or pointing up or pointing down would presumably be there and not um, up in generation um, here because it would be buried, in, encapsulated in this, oh no, sorry, encapsulated in child maker, because it would, ha, child maker would have the score. Um, but that's not going to happen today, because it's 1225, and I should stop, because I do have things to do before I can travel tomorrow. So, you are awesome human beings. I'm taking two weeks off, because I'm going to take two weeks off, um, and go see family. 
um, and do Thanksgiving, which is a peculiarly American weirdness, but I'm going to do it anyway because uh, there'll be a nice chance to see my sister and her husband and their dog and oh no I'm sad um uh oh weird um bye the two um and so I'll be back in two weeks uh if Twitter hasn't burned to the ground I'll mention there when I'm back otherwise I'll make sure that my schedule in uh Twitch is up and also, uh, feel free to join the Discord. Um, I think that QR code works, but if not, let me grab the link um, and I'll post it here. Oh, come on, invite people, copy. Uh, so I'll share on the Discord when I'm definitely gonna be back. Um, and I'll try to keep people up to date on the state of the OAuth debacle. Um, but I'm really enjoying this evolution of computation stuff. So if nothing else, we can keep uh, doing this because this makes me very happy um, and I think is very interesting. So thank you all. You're amazing people. I will see everybody later. I hope you have a great two weeks and uh, we will talk again. Ciao.